in order for us to have experiences and relationships that makes us feel good and to avoid sexualization and what feels bad, we need to know what good feels like. Here's an exercise that you can do with your players for them to understand what good feels like for them. I'll guide you through the exercise, so follow along. Make yourself comfortable and close your eyes. So now imagine that when you finish this video, you have to do something that you really don't want to. You have to meet a person that you really don't want to meet. I know you don't want to, but you have to meet them. How does that feel like? What thoughts go through your head? How does it feel in your body? Okay, now open your eyes and write down a list of everything it felt like. Okay, so if you shake off that feeling now, I know it feels a bit silly, but physically shaking the feelings off really helps us to get rid of them. So now I want you to close your eyes again. Now imagine that when you finish this video, you will meet someone that you really like, someone you have not seen in a long time, a special person in your life, someone you're longing to meet, Mm -hmm. How does that feel like? What thoughts go through your head? How does it feel in your body? Okay, now open your eyes and write down a list of everything that felt like. Okay, so now you have two lists. What do you want to call each list? Maybe one positive and one negative? And if we were to simplify and explain the feeling to a child, we might say a good feeling and a bad feeling. Each of us have the ability to feel in our body and mind when something feels good and we want to do it, and when something feels bad and we don't want to. But as you can see, some feelings can be found in both our good and bad feelings. So for example, you may feel tingly and all jittery and nervous, and then all of a sudden the jitteriness turns into feeling tense, and the nervousness becomes anxiety or fear. Then it is very important that we have learned how to define how it feels when it feels good. Because then we can feel when that feeling changes to something that doesn't feel good. Our good feeling is simply when something feels good in our body and mind. If we know how our good feeling feels, we can respect ourselves, do what makes us feel good, and stop when something makes us feel bad. In order to have good sex, we need a good feeling before and during the entire sexual intercourse. If we have a good feeling before, during and then after a while it starts to feel different and it starts to feel like something you don't want to do, something that doesn't feel right, then we always have the right to stop. Only you decide what you want to do with your own body. And the better we know our good feeling, the faster we can feel if it changes to not feeling as good anymore, so that we also can act on it. Our good feeling can also vary from day to day, from situation to situation, and the more comfortable we feel in our ability to determine what feels good to us, the easier it will be to choose to do things that we really feel good doing and feel good about and to not do what does not feel good. And this exercise is a very easy way to start finding and understanding one's good feeling and something you can do at any age. And of course, our good feeling is about so much more than just sex. For example, the good feeling can be a great way for you as a leader to bring up and talk about emotions. And for example, how it feels to be part of the training sessions, 
Does everyone in the team have a good feeling at the practices? Before a match? In the locker room? In school? Understanding your good feeling and doing this with your team gives you a common ground to start from when everyone in the team has found their own good feeling. Then you have a common language to talk about what feels good or not in the team.